Hey everybody, this is Miss Ludwig. Um, this is your first set of chemistry notes called Chem 1 Describing Matter. You can find that on page 4 of your lab notebook. Um, today is the beginning of chemistry, so we're going to talk about how to describe matter. And in order to do that, you first need to know what matter is. Matter is the stuff that things are made of. Um, everything around you is made up of matter. The walls in the classroom are made of matter. The floor, the desk you're sitting at, the computer you're looking at is made of matter. It's just the stuff that makes up things. Um, and then in order to describe matter, well, you have a desk in front of you that's made up of matter. What, but what makes up that matter? Well, there's something smaller called an atom. Um, and then these atoms also have parts. So we're going to kind of go through what makes up all the stuff around us in the, on Earth and in the universe. Um, so by the end of this lesson, um, your learning target today, which means your main mission, what you should be able to tell me if I asked you at the end of this lesson, is you should be able to identify the three subatomic particles, big fancy words, and their charges. Um, so basically, we're going to be talking about matter and atoms um, and the parts of the atoms and because these atoms are so small, remember, you cannot see atoms. They're so, so tiny. Um, we use pictures or models to represent things that we cannot see. So here on the screen, there's a couple of different models that we use to show an atom and the parts of an atom. And then we also use, sometimes we have things that are made up of more than one type of atom. Um, we would have like a molecule and we use a different model to show that. All right, so here we go. Chemistry. What is chemistry? Chemistry is the study of the properties of matter and how matter changes. So we talked about matter. Matter is the stuff that makes up things. So in this picture, it says the paper, the ceramic from the bowl, the wooden spoon, the metal, the foam from the egg carton. All of these things are different forms of matter. And we can describe matter in a lot of different ways. Um, atoms are what made up, make up matter. Atoms are made of protons, neutrons, and electrons. So that's our big fancy word called subatomic particles. Subatomic particles are just the three parts of an atom, the protons, the neutrons, and the electrons. So an atom is the basic particle that makes up an element. Um, we've probably heard of elements before. We have a whole big periodic table of them that we look about. Um, often, or we will be looking at often here in chemistry. Um, and this right here is just a model, one model, of what an atom looks like. It has a center, we call that a nucleus. It has some subatomic particles, which are the little tiny parts that make up an atom, um, called protons and neutrons that are in the nucleus, in the center of the atom. And then out around here, we have these little electrons that kind of zip around the nucleus um, in what we call an electron cloud, or sometimes we call them energy levels. So again, an atom is just the basic part of an element. It makes up matter. And the three main parts or subatomic particles of an atom are protons, neutrons, and electrons. So subatomic particles. Our first subatomic particle we're going to talk about is a proton. Protons have a positive charge, and we find them in the nucleus of an atom or in the center of an atom. So protons are positive. Remember that. A neutron has no charge. Neutrons are neutral or no charge, like zero. Um, they are also found in the nucleus or in the center of an atom. So protons positive, neutrons no charge, zero. And then lastly, we have the electrons. Electrons have a negative charge. Um, the electrons are the only subatomic particle that is not found in the nucleus. And again, they are found out here in these, what we call energy levels, or sometimes we call it an electron cloud. They kind of bounce around like crazy around the nucleus, on the outside of the nucleus. Um, you have a picture on page four that looks just like this, and you need to label it. Um, my copy in black and white is a little bit difficult to see, so make sure you're labeling it correctly. It's in the exact same order as this one. So our first subatomic particle you're going to label is the proton. Make sure you label this one down here at the bottom with a plus, because proton is positive. Um, and again, that is found in the nucleus. 
Our second subatomic particle is a neutron. The neutron is neutral or has no charge and is also found in the nucleus of an atom. And then lastly, often the star of the show is the electron because they make magic happen. Um, the electron is negatively charged and they are found in these energy levels outside or around the nucleus. These guys do not stay put. They are zipping around and moving around all the time. All right, so what is an element? Um, elements are made of only one type of atom. Um, they cannot be broken down into anything simpler. We often call them a pure substance. Um, and this periodic table here, we've seen this before. Um, each one of these little squares on the periodic table is an element. And each one of these elements has a name, and it is made up of only one type of atom. So, for example, um, the first one, number one on the periodic table, is H for hydrogen. That is the symbol for hydrogen. Hydrogen is only made up of hydrogen atoms. There is nothing else inside that element. It is a pure substance. If I picked a different element, let's say C, number six, that's carbon. Carbon is only made up of carbon atoms. There is nothing else in there. Gold and silver are elements, all right? Gold and silver down here. Uh, gold is AU, and it is only made up of gold atoms. You would find no other type of atom in that element. It is a pure substance. Um, sometimes we also have molecules. Molecules are where we have two or more atoms that are bonded together, and then they sometimes make different things, and sometimes they don't. Um, one example that you have right here is this little guy, kind of looks like Mickey Mouse. That is a water molecule. He is made of two different atoms that are bonded together from a chemical reaction. So the two different atoms that I have are the big Mickey Mouse head, that is an oxygen atom, one atom of oxygen, and then I have two little H's that are kind of like Mickey Mouse's ears. Each one of these, this is a hydrogen atom, and this is a hydrogen atom. Um, often we write a chemical formula to show what elements and how many are in a molecule or a compound. So for example, for water, I'm sure you've heard before that water is H2O. Well, what that means is the hydrogen, H stands for hydrogen, and the little two, that's a subscript, it tells me there are two hydrogens. And if I look at the picture, one hydrogen and two hydrogens. So there are two hydrogens in a molecule of water, and there is one O, the oxygen. This is just the one O. So H2O actually stands for two atoms of hydrogen and one atom of oxygen that makes up one water molecule. Uh, sometimes molecules are two atoms bonded together that are the same element, as in, um, for example, oxygen. Oxygen is a diatomic mo molecule. It floats around um, always with a buddy. There's always two oxygens kind of just hooked up together floating around. So that would be O2. That would still be a molecule even though it's just oxygen. All right, so um, that being said, we have to put some things in order. We've thrown out lots of crazy words here and some little tiny things make up another thing that make up another thing that make up another thing. So we need to get that straight. So in your notes on page four, you have what I'm about to put up on the screen here. Um, our smallest little link in all of these things is a subatomic particle. Remember, subatomic particles are the parts of an atom. Your protons, your neutrons, your electrons. Those three subatomic particles make up what we call an atom. All right, an atom. That is the basic building block of all matter, an atom. And then if we put atoms together, all the same type of atom, we put a bunch of those together, let's say gold, for example. I have a ton of gold atoms and I put them all together. That would make an element and I would find that on the periodic table right up here. So if I have a pure substance that is made of all one type of atom, we would call that an element. And then finally, sometimes if I put two or more elements or atoms together, I can make a molecule, such as my H2O water molecule, or even just oxygen, O2, just two little oxygens put together. Um, that would also make a molecule, because it is two or more atoms that are bonded chemically together. 
All right. Next, um, I'm going to show you kind of how we model molecules. Now, this is going back to this um, water molecule that I just described to you. Models of molecules often consist of colored spheres that stand for different kinds of atoms. And I'm going to show you a couple examples um, just so we can see the pictures of what some of our chemical formulas look like in a moment. So first we have a water molecule, and I know I kind of already talked about him a little bit. I stole his thunder. Um, this is a water molecule. His chemical formula is H2O because he has two H's, one H here and one H here, and he has one atom of oxygen. So H2O is a water molecule. I also spoke a little bit about an oxygen molecule. This is still a molecule because it's two atoms that are bonded together, but these atoms just happen to be the same thing. I have one oxygen right here, and I have one oxygen right here, and they are chemically bound together um, through the magic of chemistry, and they make an oxygen molecule. And then lastly, we will be talking about this guy a whole lot this year as well. His name is carbon dioxide or CO2. I'm sure you've heard of him before. If I wanted to make a molecular model of what carbon dioxide looks like, I would draw my carbon is this kind of black sphere here, one carbon. And then there's one oxygen over here and one oxygen over here. So that's two oxygens. That's why I call it CO2. The two tells me that there are two oxygens. Um, so that's kind of how we represent these molecules. Since we can't really see them, it helps sometimes to have a picture so we understand what the letters and numbers mean um, later on. And speaking of that, we are going to do a little bit of practice on how to tell how many atoms are in a molecule. This will become super important later. These are just the baby steps and laying the foundation of how we are going to learn later how to balance chemical equations. Um, so I want to walk you through maybe one example here, and then I'm going to let you do some of this on your own on page four. So on page four at the bottom, you should have this exact thing. It says, how many atoms are there? And we've already talked about a couple of these examples. Um, the top ones up here have pictures because that makes it easy on you while you're getting to learn this stuff. And then on the bottom, I take away the pictures and you only have the chemical formulas and um, you have to figure it out from there. So again, with our water molecule, this first one, do this one with me. The chemical formula, all right, the combination of symbols and numbers that I put together to, to symbolize water is H2O. And notice that that two right there is really small and kind of below. Again, we call that a subscript because it kind of sits below the line, all right? This little two only corresponds to the symbol that it is directly behind. So I have H2, that means there are two H's, all right? And if I look to my picture, I have one hydrogen and two hydrogens. So go ahead right here next to the H, you can put a number two. I have two hydrogens in one molecule of water or H2O. And how many oxygens do I have? Well, this O right here in the chemical formula is standing all by itself, which means there's no numbers attached to it. That means there's only one. So you can put a number one right there. And if I wasn't sure, I could look at the picture and I see that I literally only have one oxygen atom. Um, again, that little two only corresponds to the symbol that is directly behind. So H2O has two hydrogens and one oxygen. I'm going to let you go ahead and figure out the oxygen molecule and the carbon dioxide molecule. And if you're feeling awesome about this, you can move on to the glucose molecule, which is C6H12O6. Again, using the subscripts and the symbols to tell me how many atoms of each one of those elements is in each of these compounds. Good luck.